Welcome to Growing Bremerton Together with Mayor Patty Lent. Today we're on location in the chapel of our Bremerton Salvation Army. My special guests are Major Jim Baker and Tina Bowie. We're going to learn about the Salvation Army, what it means to our community, and the excitement of having the remodeling and the new building for the Hygiene Center. Stay with me. Welcome to Growing Bremerton Together with Mayor Patty Lent. We're on location this time in the chapel of our own Bremerton Salvation Army. And with me I have Major Jim Baker. He's going to tell us a little about his history with the Salvation Army, as well as the exciting things he's doing for the city. Welcome. Thank you. And do I call you Major Baker all the time? Uh, usually, yes. <laughs> or Major Jim. Major Jim. Mm -hmm. You've had a long history with the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how you got started and how you ended up in Bremerton. Well, that is a long story, uh, but briefly, um, I got involved with the Salvation Army in Bellingham uh, back in um, 1973, I believe it was. Uh, I was hired as a camp counselor for our Camp Arnold, mm -hmm. uh, south of Puyallup, and uh, that was just a summer job. But the following spring, I was, uh, I was needing uh, a, a place to work, uh, a place to worship, uh, a place to uh, serve the Lord. Um, and a place to live. And the Salvation Army had all four answers to my four needs. And I thought, that's more than a coincidence. So I accepted the job and, and everything that went along with it and got involved. And then three years later, I went to uh, our training school down in, uh, at that time in, in uh, uh, Rancho Palos Verdes, mm -hmm. California, and became an officer in 1979. 79? Mm-hmm. Now your family's been growing up with you, and how many different places have you actually served for the Salvation Army? Um, as a single officer, I served in three locations, mm -hmm. and then my wife and I, uh, who was also a, an officer, which is a requirement in the Salvation Army, um, we got married down in Victorville, California, and together we were in Victorville, in Reno, Nevada, Redding, California, Bakersfield, California, Helena, Montana, and then in 2000 we came here. Mm -hmm. And how old was your son then? Because I met him as a youngster. He was in second grade, so he would have been maybe seven. Mm -hmm. He's 19 now. Mm -hmm. um, you've done a, a marvelous amount of things for us here locally. And um, one of the things that brings money in to support the Salvation Army, of course, at Christmas time and the holiday season is the Red Kettles. Right. Tell us how that got started. In 1891, an officer, Joseph McPhee, down in San Francisco, was trying to think of a way to serve uh, several thousand people with a Christmas dinner. And he remembered back to his childhood in Liverpool, England, when uh, he saw something called Simpson's Pot set out on the wharf uh, for, to collect donations. And he said, I think I'll try that here. So he tried it, and it was very successful. Mm -hmm. It took a, a few years to persuade other Salvation Army officers to try it, but slowly it caught on and uh, eventually spread ar ar around the world. So um, it's been, uh, it's very symbolic of the Salvation Army. It is, and no one minds the bell ringing, and now they sing, and I know we're very supportive. All of the civic groups participate in bell mm -hmm. ringing, all of the leaders in government and in business, um, so it is widespread. It is. Yes. Some other things that you've done here locally, and let's talk about your kettle corn, because this is the newest thing that mm -hmm. you now have. Mm -hmm. It started last <coughs> May. Um, actually, it just started a year ago mm -hmm. uh, on a volunteer basis, but we started using uh, paid personnel in uh, June, in May and June. Mm -hmm. And what does that do as far as the, the revenue coming in? Well, unfortunately, it's, it just is about a break even at this point, mm -hmm. so we're still kind of debating and trying to tweak it and make it uh, profitable. <clears throat> unfortunately, our market here is so small that it's difficult to, to make it as profitable as it, as it could be in a larger market. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it has, I think, great potential. Uh, because we're not only selling directly at uh, places like Walmart, but we're also selling wholesale uh, through other locations, uh, say the, uh, the Harrison gift shops mm -hmm. um, and several other stores are, uh, are carrying our, our product. And um, it's, it's still under development, 
but um, we think that it, it could uh, have and, a great potential. And it's more than just revenue. It does give you the chance to let people know about the Salvation Army. You're at our first Friday art walks. Mm -hmm. You're at um, the Blackberry Festival. Mm -hmm. You're at the different things that take place in the city. So we're pretty excited that that's just an extension. Yeah, thank you. And we have to talk <coughs> about Sally's Camp. Mm -hmm. Because when we were at such an ebb two years ago, and there was such a need to have shelter and housing. It was you, Major Baker, that actually stepped up and said, we will start a tent camp. You were looking at the needs that you could contribute to in your own parking lot. Mm -hmm. And working with the city and then our, our great people that support the city as well as the Salvation Army, they all stepped up and you were able to get a building. You were able to have tents and sleeping bags where people could have privacy. Tell us about, in 2011, the number of people that you had to house or that Sally's Camp took care of them and moved them into some other kind of housing. We, um, we were able to house 43 families. <coughs> I couldn't tell you how many individuals, but uh, it, was, it was very successful. The, the second Sally's Camp uh, had a higher rate of, uh, of, of uh, moving people into permanent housing than the first camp. Mm -hmm. But we partnered with KCR and uh, they did the, the actual uh, casework. We simply did the housing. Mm -hmm. And it was a very good partnership. It really does take a village. Uh, and it was a village that uh, of many agencies, many individuals who contributed to make it successful. One of the nicest things is that we were able to shelter people from our cold weather and families especially. And it didn't take taxpayer money. Right. And it didn't take, um, we didn't just have a place for them to stay for a few weeks or out of the cold. With that counseling, we were trying to give them that slogan that you have, a hand up, not mm -hmm. a hand out. Right. You mentioned that in all of the different presentations that you make, and I love that. I think that is such a worthy, worthy cause. Yeah. You've got another interesting thing. Um, Breakfast at Sally's. Mm -hmm. That has been a national, if not a global, um, response to one of your people that you've served. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about Richard Lemieux. Well, Richard, um, <clears throat> of course, became homeless uh, just because of the, the advent of the internet, wiped out his catalog business, and um, uh, of course went through the, the hopelessness and despair uh, and despondency, almost suicidal, um, uh, of, uh, of that whole experience. Mm -hmm. But uh, rather than jumping off the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, came to the Salvation Army and uh, had breakfast and started meeting other homeless people and finding out he wasn't alone, he wasn't the only one. Mm -hmm. um, and because he used to be a, a sports writer, he just had this urge to start writing about the people and the situations and it turned into a book. And, and uh, the Salvation Army was simply prominent in that book, certainly not the only ones. Uh, many, many people, of course, helped him, as he, as he very gladly says, mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of people. And, but you have to have perseverance when you're a writer and you're homeless still. Yeah. So as he was getting back on his feet, um, he must have had some dedication because his book is, um, the Salvation Army actually bought some of the books mm -hmm. in order to take and spread the word of what right. you do and, right. and how homelessness needs to have a change in its culture or that stigma. <laughs> so um, I know you, it's, you sell it here. We do. And he always mentions the Salvation Army. He's at all the functions that you're at and mm -hmm. vice versa. So mm -hmm. that's an exciting thing. Right. We're trying to um, hopefully maybe have a, a movie out of that. So Yeah, there is effort being made. Mm -hmm. And I keep asking him when it's going to happen. <laughs> I do as well. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, you are going to do some revitalization with your existing facility. Right. It's um, a long time coming. I know the revitalization of downtown Bremerton has been taking oh, about 10 years to get it where it is today. And now you are finally there. You had a capital campaign, mm -hmm. some major donors that have put you at a stage that you've got a groundbreaking coming up. We do. When is that? It's uh, January 27th, mm -hmm. uh, 1 o'clock for a reception at the Norm Dix building, mm -hmm. and then between 2.30 and 3 o'clock we'll have a groundbreaking right here. Mm -hmm. And Nathan Adrian's going to be joining us. 
uh, and of course you will be here to I be will. to uh, put one of the spades into the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, a very exciting culmination, um, but it's also a, a kind of the public launch of our capital campaign because it, we've it's been private for a year and a quarter, mm -hmm. and we've raised uh, a very good amount of money, about three million dollars. But we still have about five to six hundred uh, hundred thousand to go. Right. So um, we want to uh, let the the public uh, have a part uh, in uh, their contributions. We have a, have a mail appeal out right now mm -hmm. uh, that people have been responding very generously to. But this will be a very special event. And we're I meant very to excited bring my it. response today so I could give it to you on film, but I didn't get that. I do have it, I just don't have it with me. Sure. Um, and that's a great way, I know that's something. We love it because if anyone received that mail out, it has Bremerton, Washington on it. Right. All of your other fundraisings have had to go to Arizona. The Prescott, Arizona. And you yeah. do and get- And that's confusing. It is confusing. You do get the, re the results of that, but right. people always think it's a national thing. And this is that local love that we all participate in. Well, all the utilities uh, do that same kind of thing where it goes to some central point. And so right. we've, we've gone that d direction because it's really a cost saving, mm -hmm. but it d does confuse the public. Uh, but it comes back by zip code. Uh, mm -hmm. Whatever zip codes are assigned to us, those donations come back to us. If people want to do it differently, they simply need to call us and then we make the uh, rearrangement of, uh, on the information. And that number is going to be on the screen. Now this new hygiene center that you're mm -hmm. having, um, you're actually going to remodel this building and right. then build a new chapel. Right. So I think that's pretty exciting for the city. Um, are those plans available? I know we're going to be able to see some of them here on this film. Yeah, they are available. Um, we're still uh, doing some minor tweaking of the, uh, of the floor plan, uh, but we are hoping to break ground July uh, mm -hmm. or August, and that would be really wonderful. But yeah, there's, well, we've got to vacate the whole premises for about a year and a quarter. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for other locations to, to relocate to temporarily. So you um, serve breakfast every day, we do. Monday through Friday. And lunch. And lunch. I've participated with other electeds on your lunch. Um, right. I'm very familiar with all the things that you provide the city for mm -hmm. those that are in need. And you have a food bank. Right. When this is vacated, where are you going to continue to have breakfast and or lunch? We have not established that yet. We're working on several locations, <clears throat> but unfortunately we're probably gonna have to scatter to about four different locations. Uh, church in one location, social services in another location, food bank for another, meals for another. It's gonna be kind of the reverse of what KCR did when they were able to build one building and con consolidate from four things. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to scatter for the time being. For the time being. Um, it'll be well worth it. Um, I do know that the city's willing to help in any capacity, so we probably should sit down and see if we can take and, and work together. Good. On, Appreciate um, that. Being on a bus line is very important. Yes. And there are people that aren't always homeless, but because of their income level, they still dine with you and right. they still pray with you. Right, right. So um, you do a kind of everything. One last thing before we take a break is the hygiene center. It'll have an address for our people that normally don't have an address. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what's going to be in that building. Well, the first thing, of course, we want to offer is showers and laundry. And I'd like to offer that uh, early morning, late evening, when the rest of our services are closed, but when the working poor need to get mm -hmm. cleaned up and either ready for work or cleaned up from work. Uh, we hope to have uh, a document wall where they can, uh, where the homeless can, can put their important documents like birth certificates or, or ID or mm -hmm. whatever that they could easily lose if they're camping out. Mm -hmm. um, if, we, uh, if possible, we might have a, a mail slots. Um, uh, we also want to have a clothing bank. Mm -hmm. uh, we get a lot of clothing donated, but we really have no way to really display it. Correct. But eventually we will. So a lot of new things that we'd like to add. We're not gonna decrease any of the services we have now, just add to them. And, and actually, what I, what I often say is in this building, our present building, this is where you get the hand out. Mm -hmm. The new building is where you get the hand up. Uh -huh. Because that's where we will have classrooms, mm -hmm. where we will be able to offer life skill uh, classes, um, immunizations, um, a lot of other things that, that people need to, to uh, get on their feet. A one-stop shop, you might say. Right. Um, it's been just charming to be with you and to learn a little bit more about 
not just Salvation Army, but what you're doing for our community. Um, I want you to stay with us because we have another surprise at the next after our break. Welcome back to Growing Bremerton Together with Mayor Patty Lent. Our first segment had Major Jim Baker from the Salvation Army, and now we have Tina Bowie. She works with the Salvation Army, and as we sit here in their chapel, we're going to learn a little bit more about her and also what's ahead for the city. Tina, were you born and raised in Bremerton? I was born in Bremerton. Mm -hmm. I was actually raised in Mason County out in Belfair, but I was born at Harrison Hospital. So I'm and a local girl. And um, did you always stay here locally? Uh, I didn't actually. I actually graduated from Peninsula High School because they had an arts program at the time. I'm a musician and was involved in theater and there was not much at North Mason in the 80s. So I went to Peninsula and then I went to Seattle Pacific University in Seattle where I graduated with a degree in vocal performance. I know you sing beautifully. <laughs> And as far as the Salvation Army, before you got here, you my first time to meet you was with Richard Lemieux mm -hmm. when he had just published his book and we were together and Willow was there. Willow was there. So tell me a little bit about how you tied up with Richard Lemieux. Well, Richard lived in my church and he spent nine months actually living in the downstairs of our church building and Sandy Rice spent a year and a half on the manuscript and then I took it and edited the manuscript. And then I actually ended up traveling with Richard for quite a while after we found a publisher. Mm -hmm. So, but it was 2007 when I came down here and met with Major Baker to the Salvation Army and asked to be on the advisory board. It was breakfast at Sally's that brought me to the Salvation Army. That's great because it's really just the beginning. You also are an artist and an art designer mm -hmm. and you're wearing a pendant that you I designed <laughs> for um, kind of the homeless. Yeah. Tell us how about that. Well, the group of us that helped get Breakfast at Sally's going mm -hmm. started a nonprofit called the Willow Charitable Foundation. And what we do is we buy copies of Breakfast at Sally's and then we donate it to local school districts so they can use the books in their curriculum. And I created this pendant. Uh, it's called A Place Called Home. There's been two editions of it, a smaller and a larger one. They're actually sold out right now. But we sold those and some of the proceeds came back to the foundation and the Salvation Army that would continue to help us give back to the community. But the image is based on the kanji symbol for house. Mm -hmm. So it was would be understood even in non-Western languages that we all deserve a place to live. We all deserve a place called home. And in the book, Breakfast at Sally's, because it's so prominent in our interview today, he had a dog named Willow. And mm -hmm. since the book was published and people read that, um, that willow has passed on yeah. and I know that there was a memorial service with over a hundred people mm -hmm. in attendance <laughs> at your church, at my church, Bremerton United Methodist and you sang beautifully with your daughter a song that you had written mm -hmm. um, just for that. I did. So um, there's lots of intertwinings. Now that you're with the Salvation Army not as advisory but you're now the capital campaign manager. Yes and you've made tremendous strides in the funding for this new hygiene center and the remodeling. Um, was that hard? Was that difficult to go out and search for those big dollars? Well, we have had a very good year. And yes, I will say it's, it's not a cakewalk, but I have been overwhelmed by the generosity of this community. Mm -hmm. Kitsap County on a whole, the, the way people have given has just been astounded all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had some pretty celebratory Fridays because there was multiple Fridays where it seems a check would come in or a pledge would come in and we just couldn't wait what was going to come in the mail on that Friday. But it's uh, we've raised over three million dollars mm -hmm. in the last uh, about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. We have commitment from our divisional headquarters and we are excited to be breaking ground on this project. Now on the 27th, which is um, kind of the official groundbreaking, yes. um, tell us you're going to have a, a big party and you want more people to get involved not only with participating in the groundbreaking but in the fundraising that we have. So now we're going public. 
we are going public. And what kind of a party do you have planned for us? Well, we have a wonderful reception planned mm -hmm. at the Norm Dix Center. So it's January 27th from 1 to 3 in the afternoon. That's a Sunday. And the reception starts at 1. And we have Nathan Adrian joining us mm -hmm. up from Berkeley, California. And the Adrian family will be there as well and other dignitaries and uh, important people in our community and especially our donors. We've got a number of donors that are coming and planning to share that time with us. That's exciting. Nathan's dad has been serving on um, the advisory board or on the board for Salvation Army for a number of years and it was only appropriate. Nathan is the national spokesman for the Salvation Army. So how neat for us, he's our gold medal swimmer. Yes. The city loves him and so it'll be just great for people to be back. Um, and I don't think he'll take away anything, he'll just add something That's very special. That's right. That's right. So following that reception at the Norm Dix Center, we're going to come down here and have an official groundbreaking ceremony here at the core. We're very limited in our space here and so we didn't feel like we could accommodate mm -hmm. the number of people that we will likely have at this reception mm -hmm. at this location. So. It's an easy walk. It is. It should be easy. We've got parking at the Norm Dix Center so we're all looking forward to that. Thank Tina, you. it's remarkable to have you with us you. to do what you're doing. I know between you and Major Jim Baker um, we just couldn't miss with the things that are happening. It's a perfect start for 2013. I appreciate you being here, Absolutely. and we look forward to seeing you at the next Growing Bremerton Together with Mayor Patty Lynch.